let us. Before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, say it again. Come. Come. Let us. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. In your presence, Lord. Worship. Worship It is indeed a great privilege to be here this morning. He woke us up this morning in our right minds and set us to make up our mind where we want to be. And you chose to be with us. So thanks be to God. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Do we have any visitors here this morning? Whoa, lot of youths. Wow. Come on in. Are you all from the same place? Yes. Same church? Yes. Okay, and what church? Yes. Barack, across the hall. Barack, we welcome you. Please accept warm, sincere welcome from my Emmanuel family to you and yours. We are all sisters in Christ. Thanks for coming. Is there anyone else? Who is visiting for the first time? Oh, you're not from Barack. <laughs> and your name, my sister? My name is Dorothy Watson. I'm from Jamaica, but I'm here for the fam on vacation. Oh, you're right. She's vacationing across the oceans. From Jamaica. Jamaica yeah. is in here again. Welcome, welcome. Welcome once, welcome twice. Any second time, third time visitors? Anyone else? The one over here. You're here for the first time? Second time. Welcome again. So, my brothers and sisters, we welcome you. And I hope for you that you will be richly blessed. Because this is the right place to be and the right time to be here. Um, Brother Lewis? Short. My brother would like to give us a little word or two. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Pastor, I see that our youths are away, but God send us youths to bless us. Amen. You know, just at this time, I just want to take time out to thank the church for your gift, your prayers, your support, your texting, your calling. As my wife and I were mourning the lost on either side of the family, you know, but um, we were not alone, Pastor, because we felt the brethren praying for us and we felt your heart reaching us and so we want to thank you and we pray that we will grow in strength from strength strength to strength whichever it is blessings god bless and we thank you we appreciate you god bless okay let us greet each other in jesus name we're gonna sing smile a while smile a while and give your face a rest and let us go around and shake each other's hands give god praise for waking us up this morning.
brothers and sisters from Baraka too. Bon sabah. Como se va? Good to see. <laughs> it's good to see all of these young people in church today. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm going to say you're replacing our youth because uh, they went away to a youth day at the Bellevue Church in Ocala. You're supporting that Bellevue Church, and Bellevue will come and join our youth day, which is November 24th. So where you're sitting right now on November 24th, you'll come and get that seat, okay? We want you to be here for youth day. All right, it's good to see you. Now, you guys came to do praise and worship for us, right? All right, with us. All right, all right, pay attention to the program, okay? We're going to have church today. We're going to have church today. Those who are joining us online, I want to send greetings to you as well. Thank you for being here with us and for our second time uh, guests and friends and first time. We're glad that you're here. It's going to be a blessing today. Um, don't worry about the numbers. We're going to have church today and we're going to praise Jesus. We want to lift up the name of the Lord and we're going to rejoice in his presence. For the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Amen, somebody. I just I know, I want to very briefly share a few announcements with you before I take my seat. Um, I want to let you know that we, our food pantry, which we started about beginning of September, mid-September, it's going strong. Would you say, Elder Walker? It's Amen. going Amen. strong, um, led by Elder Walker, uh, Sister Brooks, um, Sister Horn, and others who are supporting and being there as well. We are, we are having an opportunity now to partner with Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, to be a partner with them to receive goods, um, food on a regular basis. In preparation for that, church family, because um, there is an inspection process that we will need to go through uh, to be approved to store and house food and distribute food to the community, not only food, but also Christ-centered material. And we eventually, eventually, part of the plan is to be a church that is making a difference here in this part of Orlando, and we will be offering other services as well, such as maybe GED classes or ESL class classes. Um, we want to also do budgeting classes and cooking classes. I, I don't hear anybody yeah. saying amen. amen. I'm, I, we are determined to be a church that's making a difference, so we're not going to do things as normal. We're going to step on out and watch God move. So these, these things are coming. So in preparation to partner with Second Harvest Food Bank, um, we, the board has decided we're going to renovate the garage. We're going to renovate the garage. Um, I also want to, if you pay attention to, to, to Adventist news and what's happening in the Adventist church, some of you who do, you know that this last week, the annual council, the end of year council, annual council ended. Um, and through the process, as, as I mentioned last week, I asked the church to pray. Pray for the church because we are, we are, we are facing, we're at a crossroads. Let me put it that way. Not to put it lightly, but we are at a crossroads. Okay, we're at a crossroads. As a result of the decision at the annual council from those that were in attendance, <clears throat> the Florida Conference Administration has issued a statement. And I want you to please pay attention. And this is good for our, our youth and young people in, <clears throat> in the congregation today. I told you last week that I needed glasses, right? So I, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Don't clap. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> All right. October 22nd. As you may have heard, on Sunday, October 14th, <clears throat> excuse me, our church's general conference executive committee voted to approve a document establishing a process for reporting and addressing perceived non-compliance with general conference session and executive committee actions. The process provides for disciplinary measures to resolve non-compliance upon the recommendation of appointed compliance review committees. These measures include, include warnings to organizations deemed non-compliant and public reprimands to the organization's president. Eventually, Church leaders may even be removed from the elected representative capacity to the General Conference Executive Committee if perceived noncompliance is not rectified <clears throat> to, satisfy, to the satisfaction of the General Conference Compliance Review Committees. In response to this voted action, 
the officers of our North American division have issued a statement critical of the document as going against the biblical values proclaimed by the Protestant reformers and the founders of the Adventist church. This statement characterizes the document as allowing for centralized power and creating a hierarchical system of governance within our church. Because this document is widely recognized as a response to differing views on the place of women as ministers in our church, both North American Division and Southern Union Conference leaders have addressed this matter directly. The NAD, North American Division officers, authored a letter addressed to our sisters in ministry, expressing collective confidence in their ministry along with the promise of utmost support for their strength and empowerment in church evangelism. The Southern Union Administration also issued a statement that it will continue, quoting, continue to celebrate, support, empower, and include our female pastors and other female leaders in the mission of our church, end quote. We, we add our voice wholeheartedly to these affirmations. We are deeply saddened that the acrimony surrounding this issue distracts and detracts from our avowed focus on evangelism, but we must continue to be about our Lord's work. We will thus continue to walk together, supporting each other in faith, hope, and love, since as Paul wrote to the Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. God bless you all, Florida Conference Administration team. Our church is at a crossroads. And for our young people, for you, I'm glad you're here today. I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know what led you to come and for those who are here and those online for you to join Emmanuel today. But this is your church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is your church. It's not just old folk church. It's your church. We have to be cognizant and aware of the issues that are right now building up tension, leading to GC in 2020. But this is also God's church. And even though some of these things and decisions that were made at the annual council affected me deeply because I support my sisters in ministry. Matter of fact, if I recall correctly, I think Ellen White was a female. She was a leader in the church. I support my sisters in ministry. There's a work that ladies can do that men cannot do. There's a work that men can do that ladies cannot do. We all have our respective influence and our responsibility to God. I want you to be aware of what's happening in your church. Not, the, not just the divisive issues, but what brings me hope is that sometimes for God to do a miraculous thing, a little shaking needs to occur. And that's all right. Because it's his church. So don't worry, don't fret. We'll be all right. Stay with Jesus. Stay with him. He's the captain of this ship. So you ready to take my seat. Um, I want to remind us that Laughing Your Way to Life fundraiser for your sister church, Windermere, is happening next Saturday night. Matter of fact, you, you guys don't want to miss this. The Windermere Church, which is located in Windermere, will be having a, 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 a comedy night, but it's a fundraiser for Oshkosh, for the Pathfinders to get to Oshkosh next year. If you are able to purchase a ticket, just go on the Windermere website, contact the church, and Miss Eulinda McDowell will get in contact with you. But it's at 7, 7.30 on November 3rd. You are invited to be there. Next week, as I mentioned, I'll be at Solid Rock Church, uh, ending their week of prayer, and Elder Cleveland Garnett will be the speaker. He's the head elder of the sister church. 
And Elder Richards is there at Windermere today speaking. So it's okay to share elders. Amen. 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 Let's, let's rejoice today, all right? God is in control. You come to praise the Lord. We come to worship. We come to encourage each other in the faith. God is in control. Matter of fact, his house is called the house of prayer, and we're going to pray today. We're going to pray today. That's where I feel God is leading us, to pray. To pray for you, to pray for victory, to pray for miracles to happen. We're going to pray. Revival starts with prayer. And preparation is, for all the Emmanuel folks, preparation is? God bless you. So if you are ready really to lead and help us and join with worship, you call out a song or Elder Mack is going to call out a song and we're going to worship together, all right? We're going to have church today, all right? Amen. Amen. as well on the screen. We'll read responsibly. Praise is rightfully yours, God in Zion. Vows to you must be fulfilled for your for you answer prayer. All flesh must come to you with all its sins. Though our cause overcome us, you must them all. Happy the man you choose whom you invite to live in your courts. Fill us with good things, good things, things of your house, house of, of your holy temple. temple. Let us now affirm our faith by using Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, and John 3, 16 and 17. Together, remember, remember the Sabbath day to, to keep it holy. holy. Six, Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, 
Thou not thy son, not thy daughter, not thy man servant, not thy maid servant, not thy cattle, not thy stranger that is in thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Sabbath rest. Precious Father, we don't come with any pretense of pretending that we're okay. The truth be told, some of us, many of us, Lord, we go to bed with problems on our head and wake up with the same problems. And right now we are in your courts, in your house of prayer, in your house of praise because you have invited us to be here. And we come hungry and thirsty and offering to you what little praise we can give to the king of the universe, to the majesty of heaven. You will, I know, Lord, accept our praise because you love us that much and we, you, Lord, you are adored, by, we adore you, Lord, you are passionate about us. And we come with our brokenness, we come with our faults, we come with our misgivings and misdirections sometimes, but Lord, we come because right now, when we walk out of this place, we dare not have missed Jesus. It would have been all for naught, just going through the motions. So today, at this time, as we come to worship, as we come to receive, as we come to encourage, do a miraculous work in this place here today. For the soul that is heavy, confused, burdened, doubtful, that is in grief, 
sorry for their sin, sorry that has shame, no direction. I pray that your light, your truth would penetrate whatever darkness surrounds them and speak peace and give peace to that mind, to that heart. May we be transformed, Lord, because we ask you to be here. We're responding to your invitation to be here. Do your work today through every instrument that's dedicated to you. Have your will, have your way. For we pray and ask and expect in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid it all. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. from Luke 14, Luke 14, verses 28 through 30. And we'll read alternately. Is it found? It's on the screen also. And I start with verse 28, and you'll read verse 29, and we, we will read verse 30 together. For which of you, intending to build a tower, Sit it not down first, and, count, and counted the cost, whether ye have sufficient to finish it. Together, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Please be seated. You know, I noticed this morning as I was doing the um, call to worship, the young people was way beyond me. And I noticed again when, when we were doing the offering, they were way up front as well. That tells me 
we are truly worshiping God. Amen. It's a good thing that our young people have gone to Akala and they are here with us. We want to give God thanks and praise to them. Yeah. You know, I have my glasses. I can't see you when I have my glasses, so I gotta take them off so I can see you. you know. So it's prayer time. A lot of things are happening in the world today. Things that you don't even think would happen, but Jesus already warned us from the very foundation that these things are coming upon the world. And those of us who would stand, would stand through God's words. So let's pray together. Let's pray together. If you're impressed to come forward, come up here. Let's kneel together and lift up the Lord in prayer. There's a sweet Sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the kindred tongue and people without you Lord we truly would not have made it this morning to this place we thank you for who you are the God of all gods the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords you are our God the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob without you Lord we are nothing without you there is no life for you are the giver of life even the beginning of life you are everything though some may say differently Lord but we know it is you if mankind could stop themselves from dying then they are a God but no man can stop themselves from dying but you have given man power to do a lot of things but one thing mankind cannot do is give life. And you are the giver. With that, we know that they are raised a God without any doubt in our hearts. Father, you have raised us up to give glory and honor and praise unto your name from the very foundation. Even our foreparents have gone astray, but you have made a way that we should come back to you to praise you. You could all just Wipe us all up, but you found grace in the eyes of Noah. And so, Lord, we begin another generation. And generation after generation, and to this day, we have Christ as our Savior. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation for our sins. We can have forgiveness. Father, we have some young people in our midst this morning. We want to thank you for the opportunity that you have given them. 
Father, let them know that you have raised them up for a time like this. Just as Esther have said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to the king to save Israel. And our young people in our churches, our church dies. Father, strengthen them. Give them the courage. Empower them. Lift them up, oh God, that they may have that power without any doubt. Even when they go to colleges to study different subjects area, dear Lord, will, that will bring doubt in their hearts, Father. Let them just to learn the things that you need them to learn. So that you need me be glorified when they leave these colleges to teach younger ones to give glory and praise unto your name to their father. Help them to be like a Daniel as well. That I will not bow down to any other God but the true and living God that have kept me all these years of the many blessings that you have poured upon them, dear father. That they may glorify your name continually. Lord, we thank you for bringing them. And even those of our young people who are over to our call of their Lord, Touch their hearts too over there, dear Father. Let them continue to praise you wherever they go. Help them, dear Father. Because, you know, the enemy is wrath with your pe children. He seeks mainly our young people. If they could get into their minds and their hearts, dear Father, to bring them down, he would. But Lord, help them to know that you are right there. Right there alongside them to stand with them, dear Father. We thank you. We thank you for our pastor here, Father Hart Castle, who has encouraged us and encouraged our young people, a man with a passion for young people. We thank you, dear Father. Without you, what could we do? Thank you again for all that you have done for us in the past. And we know we have a great future, but you have a plan for us so that we will prosper in this life and the life to come. Oh, great God, all who have heard your words, and have meditate upon them and call unto your name. Save them into your kingdom and save us, Lord, when that time should come. In Jesus' name, amen. This afternoon, like I said, we're going to have church. And as we pray, Baraka 2, the youth of Baraka 2, are coming to lead in the meditation song or the worship song for us. Amen. 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 Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Is anybody happy to be in the house of God today? Amen, because I know I am too. Uh, would you guys care to join with me and praise the Lord? Is anybody ashamed to praise God or is anybody proud to praise their God? Because I know I'm proud. I serve a good God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our first song will be I'll Praise You, Lord. Oh 
take it and go very old school. I hope you guys appreciate this one. This is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Amen. Crowd favor, I could tell by the smiling faces. So I'll be, lead us. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry while on earth. Do not pass me by.
You know you all are like family now. <laughs> Consider this your home across the street. I will not stand before you as a pretender. There are times where I am scheduled to stand before you and I have nothing. I got up a little after three o'clock this morning agonizing with the Lord. There are some things that are going on in my life that I don't understand. I don't understand and I, I know or I believe it is not of God. And because of my personality and the person that I am, I, I'm analytical. You know, I, I want to see the reason behind what is happening and investigate it and research it and dissect it and flip it up and turn it over and, and tell it to sit down. I have reflected on some memories that in my younger years, I remember I was determined not to walk out of the house until I knew that God was with me. And sometimes we, life happens and get so busy and distracted and responsibilities and things and children and everything and sometimes we get numb to the reality that is he with us as we walk over the threshold of our home and enter into the world as young people Anybody who's under 80 is young, amen. As young people, I want you to, if you get anything today, I want you to get this. Prayer is the breath of the soul. And when we neglect to develop the habit and the life of prayer, You will, we all will develop stinky breath. You missed that. If prayer is the breath of the soul, and we're not making prayer a habit, not to ask God of things, but to be with God in our times of solitude, when we're isolated, when there's no distraction, there's no cell phone, there's no computer, there's no internet, God forbid there's no Wi-Fi, but if that case happens, if we're not engaged in an attitude of prayer, learning what it means to access God and to hear from Him, we will take prayer for granted and not experience what God can do. It will become spasmodic in our lives, meaning momentarily, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little. But it's to be the thread, the theme of our lives. Many of us have heard within Adventism, we use the term revival and reformation. And here at this church, my motto, I believe that preparation is everything. And in order for a revival to happen before Reformation, there's a step that needs to be engaged in and embraced first, and that is seeking God in prayer. Amen. 
when Jesus was on the Mount of Olives, Luke says in chapter 22, in verse 39, Jesus, he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed in verse 42, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And I don't know if we caught this before, but verse 43 says, An angel appeared before him, strengthening him. And verse 44, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly while the angel was there, strengthening him. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Arise and what pray that you may not enter into temptation. Prayer is indeed the breath of the soul. It is the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved except through prayer. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life. And, my friends, it strengthens, for those of us who know, it strengthens the sinews and muscles of the religious experience. Now, if I stood before you, and my muscles are here, and you've got your muscles there in, in your body, and if the tendons and ligaments and sinews were disconnected from the bone, what would happen to me? I'll become a, a, a blob. But prayer is like the sinews and the ligaments and the tendons of the religious life. Neglect the exercise of prayer or engage in prayer spasm spasmatically now and then as seems convenient and you and I, my friends, will lose our hold on God. The spiritual faculties lose, we will lose our vitality. The religious experience will lack health and will lack vigor. Don't forget to pray. The English has not done justice to our interpretation of prayer. and You've heard me say this before. You for the first time. Prayer is not simply asking God as the English would have it, have us to understand. Prayer is not God give me, God give me, God give me. God, why did you, God, why did you, God, why did you? God, would you, God, would you, God, would you? The original meaning of prayer, take this with you. If you don't get anything else, is to examine oneself before God. Tefila. Tefila. Examining oneself before God. And if there is going to be any revival, if there is going to be any reformation, we cannot superficially skate through this thing and expect that it's going to happen because God wants it to happen. But there is a preparation process that we must engage in first because preparation is everything. It is everything. Do you remember the parable of the five wise and the five foolish virgins? Let me read something to you. The class, Ellen White puts it this way, the class represented by the foolish virgins are not, are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They have an advocate they, they have advocated the truth. They have attracted to those who believe the truth, but they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit's working. They have not fallen upon the rock, Christ Jesus, and permitted their old nature to be broken. 
the Spirit works upon man's heart according to his desire and consent, implanting in him a new nature. But the class represented by the foolish virgins have, have, been, have been content with a superficial work. They do not know God. They have not studied his character. They have not, ye, uh, not held communion with him. Therefore, they do not know how to trust, how to look, and how to live. Their service to God degenerates into a form and formalism. Listen, young people. We're going to pray today. I thought somebody would say amen. Bless you. There's a, difference between, there's a difference between belief and biblical faith. There's a difference between belief and biblical faith. There's a difference, and we got to understand this. You, as a young Seventh-day Adventist Christian, any person here, you who are online, there is a stark difference between believing something and having biblical faith. She describes the experience, the difference between mere belief, Ellen White, and biblical faith this way. Genuine faith works by love and purifies the soul. There is a faith that has power to cleanse the life from sin. You see, the devils believe that Christ came into this world as man's redeemer. That he wrought many mighty miracles. That he was one with the Father that he died a shameful death to save fallen man. The devils believe that he rose from the dead, that he ascended into the heavens, and now he sits on the right hand of the Father. The devils believe that he is coming again, and that shortly the time will be, with power and with great glory, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey the gospel. You see, the devils believe all that is recorded in both the Old and New Testaments. The devils believe. But will this faith save demons from destruction? They have not faith that works by love and purifies the soul. That faith and that alone which cleansed the soul temple is genuine faith, genuine biblical faith. Do you got faith? Do you have faith? You see, our stinky breath can be cleansed. Hallelujah, somebody. Prayer is the breath of the soul. We can be cleansed from stinky breath as we seek God, as we turn to God, as we prostrate, do whatever must be done to hear from God. You know, you remember Nehemiah? Nehemiah was a man of opportunity. And before he appeared before the king, he got the report from his brethren that Jerusalem was done. And Nehemiah, Though he was the cupbearer, the, the king's servant, Nehemiah took it upon himself to go and plead for his brethren that Jerusalem would be restored. And you know what Nehemiah did? The Bible says that he fasted and he prayed. He confessed the sins of his fathers and the sin of his people and his own sin. And he put before God his own promise, said, you said that you would restore. If we don't hold God to his promise, we are lost. We have no hope. Our activities will be self-centered and self-righteousness, but we've got to take a look at the book and say, this is your promise. And you know what? Because of his great mercy and because of the need of mercy that we have, he will answer his own promise. If he did not, we would be in trouble. So he would not just bless the pretentious, righteous. He will bless anyone that turns to him, seeking him in prayer. Do you remember Daniel in chapter 9? Daniel, who was a servant in Babylon, 
had a position of prestige and notoriety, and Daniel sought God by fasting and prayer, confessing the sins of his fathers, his, the sins of his brethren, and of, his, of himself. And we look at Daniel and say, man, dare to be a Daniel. If we could just have some Daniels in 2018. But Daniel, Nehemiah, Emmanuel will not forsake seeking God in prayer. I'm not going to be long. I'm not because when I got up, God, I have nothing you will have to say something. Every time, not just today. And I'm looking for a revival in my own soul. Let me share with you this. Reflecting on the five wise and the five foolish one more time. The greatest danger that the foolish experience or or, or the, the, the danger that they had was that they, 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 there was no urgency. There was, the, there was del- the, the, the bridegroom delayed, so it was like, you know, we cool, we good. Take your time. You know, let me, let me Snapchat somebody and, you know, text somebody and we good. I, it, it's, he's coming. He's coming soon. We sing that, right? Yeah. He's coming Coming, coming soon, I know. Why do we sing it if we don't live like it? Why? You know, it feels good. It's a nice, it's a nice song. If you, you know, it, it, it's good. It's, it's a good hymn. But believing something is not enough until that belief motivates you, moves you to change your life. And it's not just change, it's transformation. Because I can change my clothes. And you can change your clothes. But it's still the same me underneath the clothes. But transformation is a totally different thing. Transformation means that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The greatest danger that the foolish, foolish virgins faced was the j- danger of putting off a decision of enormous consequences. Listen, it was spiritual complacency that paralyzed them. Spiritual pride paralyzed them. They were blinded by self-congratulations. They were bathed in self-confidence. And they were satisfied with what they had. Hmm. I'm going to let that sink in if it needs to walk up and down the pews. They were satisfied with what they had. I have no need of anything else. My lantern is good. My, my oil level is it's okay. They were satisfied with what they had. So when the bridegroom said that he would be coming, I'm good. You good? We all good? Oh, I'm sorry. We straight? (laughs) The foolish virgins never dreamed. They never dreamed. They were unprepared for the coming of the bridegroom. They failed to understand their lack. They were waiting for the coming of the bridegroom when they should have been preparing for the coming of the bridegroom. Waiting and preparing is two different things. Stay in a state of preparation because preparation is... Now, if you don't take away anything today, I need you to be saying that on the way out. Preparation is everything. It's not just expecting the Lord to come, but it is being prepared, preparing for him to come. I'm going to close with this. So, listen, listen closely. The story is told of a strategy session that Satan held with his evil angels. 
they were discussing how to keep human beings out of heaven. So one angel spoke up and said, I will tell them there is no God. And Satan responded, that will never work. You see the evidence from nature, the Bible, prophecy, and transformed lives is too great. You must think of something else. Another angel, the second angel, spoke up. I will tell them there is no truth. Satan responded, you may deceive some that way, but thinking people recognize that just as there is scientific truth, there must be religious and moral truth. So think of something else. So a third angel came up with a brilliant idea. I will tell them that there is no hurry. Tell them to put off personal preparation. Tell them to wait until a more convenient time to deal with their inner attitudes. Tell them there is no need to be in any hurry at all about a personal relationship with God. <laughs> and even though this story is fictitious, its lesson is very accurate. The bridegroom appeared to delay. He is coming, coming, coming soon, I know. Coming back to this earth again And the weary pilgrim Will to glory go When the Savior comes to reign Listen to the adjective of how the pilgrim is described Weary, tired beat up, discouraged, down and out, wondering what is going to happen in their future. Will I marry him or will I marry her? What will my education be? Is things going to be all right in my church? Should I leave the church or should I stay? He is coming. And a personal spiritual revival that this Adventist church has been asking for and seeking and teaching and proclaiming it will be experienced when not as a large community but when each individual engages in seeking god to fila to fila and you know why elder you know why most of us are quick to pray for others than to pray for ourselves. We are afraid of what God would show us about ourselves. We are afraid because we think we can fool God and pretend with God and we can fool each other. Oh yes, we can. But to be prostrate before God and spend not one, not two, three, four, five hours in prayer seeking God. Here's the thing. Don't get fooled just because God doesn't answer you in the first hour. And you feel like, well, God is not hearing me. Let me get up and go about my way. Don't be fooled. Seek him. Because you know what it does? It develops, it develops a, a, a habit. It develops... A, a propensity to not turn away from God because the habit is naturally for us to leave God. And when we leave God through neglecting prayer, we can believe rather than have biblical faith that he's really with us. Don't neglect prayer. Seek him. Ask him. Ask him. Here's the promise. Though your sins 
be like scarlet and they stink. I am the one that will make them white as snow. I don't want any of you to perish. So I've made a way for you, even when your wretchedness, to appear before me. And if you are willing, I will clean you up. I will clean you up. But many of us, we think we, you know, we straight with God. We're okay and everything is good because we've got the form and formalism of religion. But true religion, heartfelt religion never lets go of God and desires and thirsts and hungers after him more and more and more and more and the promise is he's got to keep his word that he will fulfill every desire that you have that's his promise told me it's time for you to shut up it's, it's done I'm done it's done so we pray we pray Elder Walker, stand there. Elder Mac, would you stand there, please, at the, at the back door? Bring the baby with you if you can, Brother Lewis. Elder Lewis, come stand here. Right up front. Biblical faith, not just mere belief, because the demons believe. They believe too, and they tremble, and we say we believe. It's time to have biblical faith that demolishes strongholds, that bring down arguments, anything that sets itself up against the supremacy of Jesus Christ, we bring it down. It's Jesus all, not Jesus half, not Jesus sometime. It's Jesus all. And my prayer for you as you go out into this world and take the leadership helms of this church, Jesus all, all the time. We need you. This church needs you. Don't get off the ship. Elders, stretch your hands out. And I'm going to ask all, all, all who are able to stand. And we're covering, we're, we're going to ask God to do something today. <clears throat> stretch your hands out, elders. Lord, symbolically, we don't even know what to ask for. We don't need, know what to ask for. And we take for granted what the Holy Spirit does on our behalf. Maybe some don't understand him, so we, we neglect to investigate and research. Who is this comforter that I have that you, Jesus, has promised to give me? I don't know anything about him, so I will neglect the power of what he can bring and the transformation of what he can do in my life. For that person who's in a relationship, who is not being treated with respect, Give them the confidence right now to say no and to walk away. And whatever thing that we lose for you will be gained. But whatever we keep for ourselves, we will lose it.
cover your people as we seek revival. Forgive us for pretending and, and faking it and, 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 and trying to impress and forgive us for not being genuine. Gen this gen only genuosity can enter into your courts. Because when you bring all that you've gathered to your table, let not one here hear the words from the host from you, Jesus. Friend, how did you get in here? And we are speechless because we have not on the proper attire and the garments that you've provided. We stretch our hands. Cover, cover. May there be confession of fault and sin. May we seek forgiveness from those that we have wronged. May we follow your path. Give these young people, those who are standing, wisdom and discernment and intelligence of how to apply the principles of your kingdom. Give it to us if you don't, Lord, as we seek it. If you don't give it to us, we will be lost and we will cause others to be lost. So uh, please answer that prayer and bless your people. If you don't, if you don't fix it, we don't have a chance. So fix it, Jesus. Fix it. We only have one life. And may we use the decisions, the power of, of intelligence wisely. And whatever you let go, you will, rest, you will give to us a hundred times more. Whatever we hold on to, we will lose. So, Lord, I'm ending this prayer now. Cover your people. May those who seek you earnestly get a refreshing of their breath, their prayer experience, their life, as we seek you in revival. And may we be patient with each other as we'll enter into the struggle of saying goodbye, so long, farewell to old habits and things. May we be patient with each other. Because we're not doing it for, for the another. But because it is the appropriate response that we can give to how you've given us your grace. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Amen. I want to thank God for using Pastor, Pastor Hart Castle once more to encourage us. And now I will encourage you and us with the word of God from Joshua 1. Verse 8 and 9. This is what it says. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to, to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Just before I go to the next verse, in the day when... God had chosen 12 men to go up to Canaan to spy out that land. Joshua and Jephunneh, which is now known as Cabel, was the two youngest. Yes, they were the two youngest. So you see, young people, God has chosen out of all 12, the youngest, to lead. Joshua was one of them. And this is the word of God to Joshua and to us today. It says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong. And of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord, 
Thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Go, my brothers, go, my sisters, children, go, know that the God that we serve is with us always. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. We'll be ushered out, and the song that we'll sing to usher is 442. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrims here as we wander in exile from home. 442. Oh, winter. 